Hello, everybody. We're back uh, for part two of uh, whatever I'm going to call this, Blades Retrospective. Um, uh, Andrew and I are going through old versions of Blades in the Dark and looking at dead ends in the design and places where uh, uh, things evolved. Uh, mostly. Weird evolutionary curiosities like a lizard with six legs. <laughs> That's right. The dodo is yeah. in here somewhere. Uh, Neanderthal, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you haven't seen part one, uh, you can go check it out. Uh, Andrew is working on their own uh, Blaze in the Dark hack, Girl by Moonlight. Um, so uh, we thought this would be fun to have a little conversation about some of these bits and pieces that didn't survive into the final version um, and talk about design process along the way. So I'm going to switch us back over to the detritus of Blades design. Uh, so here we are in, what version is this? We are in version two. It still says 1.5 on the cover here, but this is actually version two. We've incremented a full digit. A full digit has occurred um, for various reasons, which we, we can touch on here. So it's still these booklet booklet format. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I got to say, uh, yet another uh, thing to say about how dead ends aren't really dead ends. This whole visual style, this like kind of like fantasy-ish looking thing, still a little yeah. industrial, but kind of has that fantasy vibe. Um, and the idea of these folder, folding booklets, uh, the little colored tabs on the bottom and stuff. Strash, um working this on Band of Blades, Blades right? like, reached out yeah. to me and was like, hey, you're not doing anything with that, right? I really like that look. And I was like, yeah, me too. I always liked that. I thought it was cool. And he was like, I'm going to use it. I'm like, go do it. And so this just like all this work just, that I very painfully, there was a, a point we're going to hit here where I was like, I'm redoing the graphic design. Yeah, uh, and that's got to be a big kick in the teeth. It was it was annoying, but I was like, it's just wrong. It, it's wrong. I have to I have to change it. Um, but it it wasn't a waste like it, it just got picked the full package got picked up and reused by Strash, and it's a perfect fit for band of blades i think yeah something about the lettering and the like texture of those like white kind of cutouts in it just make me makes it feel very like crusades era or something yes exactly like it there's a little bit of like the araby vibes and yeah there's just i totally see what you mean yeah the illuminated manuscript ish mm -hmm. a bit uh, yeah, it's like adjacent to that mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't quite serve the the final kind of setting and situation of the game. Yeah, Blades needed like metal type on a on a printing press, uh, yeah, and to yeah, have exactly. that have that industrial like era. Got to get the ink rakes on it. Exactly, exactly. So here we are, version two. Uh, Can you talk to me about this whole uh, kink? situation we've got here with being dominant and <laughs> i mean that's what that's the best part uh <laughs> this this ladder oh boy the dominance ladder whatever what, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we can call it, it that isn't just full I learn about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah um but we know andrew the, the the last video we did together uh we I mean, know not that, that there's anything wrong with that if, if this was really that this bottom would not be called vulnerable it would be called power power bottom um so yeah, no, this is all, this is, this is another very fruitful design dead end where, um, as I said in the last video, there were a lot of the business of, of grinding through the playtest of what this game was, was position essentially like how, how does fictional positioning manifest in this game? Um, and a lot of other games had already done it, most notably Apocalypse World, um, yep. but poisoned before that and many other RPGs. Uh, but I, I wanted it to be this kind of module instead of Apocalypse World solution, which is a very good solution, um, which is, you know, f funneling you off into all these little buckets of, of fiction and then resolving those unique cases. Yeah, each to their own yeah. set of mechanics. Which obviously is great. Uh, I really, I wanted it the other way. I really was obsessed with this idea that no, we can have it. We can have this kind of general case. Um, and we're going to use the fictional details to prosecute those cases. We're never going to just sit back and go, Oh, this is stealth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, every case is going to be treated. Yeah, yeah. It's always going to be treated on, on a case by case basis. Can um, I weigh in on something here? Yeah. Yeah. This is actually you 
like writing a thesis to, to like describe this thing that exists, this phenomena that constantly goes on unsaid in all other games about like, I want to do the thing. Can I do the thing? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. This idea of like how we talk about the fiction and your system that you ended up making synthesizes that conversation and structures it uh, in a way that is not arbitrary. It actually is a distillation of the real behaviors that go on at the table mm. and it lays them out for you. And it gives you, uh, it puts a name on things that people were doing in an unexamined way. I feel. Yes, that I, that I agree with that. Um, the other component is that there, that it was being examined, um, by Emily, uh, Carabas and Vincent and Meg Baker, especially by a lot of people at Ben Lehman and other people. Mm -hmm. Um, mostly and for me on Vincent's blog, uh, leading up to poisoned, um, and in a wicked age and apocalypse world, um, there was a lot of conversation around it and the forge also was a big component here too. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I benefited greatly f with, from other people who had already condensed this very large concept down into m more manageable concepts like fictional positioning for one thing. Emily came yeah. up with that. Um, so that to be able to engage with it at all. It had to be articulated once it was named and like, you know, given that, that form and then people started talking their way through it. Um, it, it became like part of the lexicon of tabletop design in a way where before it was this very mushy thing. And it still is a mushy thing outside of a particular like cult de sac of gamer culture. Um, mm -hmm. Fictional positioning isn't really a thing in the Shadowrun books. Yeah, uh, it yeah, is. And when you play Shadowrun, but it's not talked about, no one, you know, no one names it. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to kind of place yourself within the movement and like change of a discipline in the way that you just did of saying like, this is just, you know, one step along the way of, yeah, the like broader kind of design uh, culture or whatever. The, yeah. The cultural knowledge that has been shared and iterated upon. Yeah. To try to do like, it, this would never have occurred to me to attempt before those people had done that work. Um, mm -hmm. Once that work was in place, it was like, oh, this is a tool I can use now how do I how how do I want to use the tool as opposed to what is how you know yeah. uh, it was so to so much articulated in the first place yeah, yeah so much further along I always think of Vincent has a great there's a really good blog post um, that like follows on from this one uh, where he gets into a more deep like elaborate set of examples but he says uh, oh I came up with the world's most detailed firearms uh, gun system for role playing games. Um, and you're like, okay, <laughs> how long right, did that, that's a, that's a very Vincent, how long did that Vincent. take you? And he's like, oh, it's just, it's like one, it's one paragraph or one sentence or whatever. I'm like, okay, <laughs> lay it on me. And he's like, well, uh, when you like, let, let, let's say you've, um, when you attack someone, you roll a D six, uh, and the higher the number, the worse it hurts them. Um, so let's say that's it. Let's our, let's our baseline. Um, mm -hmm. when you use your gun, in a way where its capabilities are uh, more effective, where its attributes are more effective. Um, roll two, uh, D6 instead of one, and take that, you know, higher number, whatever. Um, if you use your gun in a way where its attributes make it less effective, uh, roll two and take the lower one. Then all the, the, it's the most detailed gun system ever because the more you know about guns guns the more you can <laughs> the more you can that yeah question. like it is it oh, how much stopping is it a 45 acp is it a nine millimeter has what's the stopping power da, 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 da. you can be as detailed as you want to get that bonus die or penalty die yep and really <laughs> what you're doing and the way the reason it always stuck in my mind was oh you're you're just caring more about the fiction uh yeah, in a nitpicky way and but, or you have more context for the fiction mm -hmm. that's another way to look at it too yeah. And so, and I love Stephen Bruce and a lot of, he has a lot of great moments in his writing where Vlad, his, his actiony sort of c c scoundrel criminal character, he's in a situation and you're in his head. It's a first person POV and Vlad will be 
really worried because his his knife is like sitting on the chair over there not in on him where he and like he's talking to this guy and he's trying to think of like what I'm going to do and the fact that he has to lunge and grab it is going to matter for whether he survives this or not and yeah as we were playing blades we kept having all these scenarios where where someone was sitting suddenly really mattered but it didn't matter in a way where there was sitting position mechanics right <laughs> that's Which, not really what mattered yeah yeah it it mattered to us in the moment yeah in a way that couldn't be genericized into a a game system modifier um and or so simulationist thing where it's just like well this is where you said you were sitting so you're sitting there and a lot of games do that you know uh, everyone has seen maybe <laughs> maybe not maybe i'm too old now but like phoenix command and and those type of games that just did take all those things into account and did give you like 0.5 modifiers for whatever and um it becomes insane uh but but we some kind of excess of detail orientedness yeah 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 and weighs you down we wanted to care as much as we wanted to care and then we wanted the game system to step in and, and resolve things for us. So this so like insane lights as thinly as you elected to at any given moment and to be able to work more broadly. Yeah. And then uh, like Vincent's example, like you slice as thinly as you want, but then you output to this like easy mm -hmm. uh, vector, like, plus one minus one basic or whatever yeah it's once like, the conversation happens the mechanical consequences of it are very clear and simple mm -hmm. yeah okay so this is our this is our goal <laughs> this is our goal this is our this is the target and we were doing it successfully in in play yeah uh and it was like how do we export that to other groups in a reliable fashion that's clear and easy to understand and sounds like fun and not a horrible chore and so on and so forth uh, so this, this ladder here, the dominance ladder, um, <laughs> it's all about, uh, your position. Um, and in the middle of, it says equal, you have equal position. Um, you're on equal footing is really what, what we're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Um, then you can have the upper hand, you can be dominant or, you, or no quarter, which is like that person's at your mercy. You know, that's, yeah. uh, and then the other way down weak you're, vulnerable. At their mercy. you're at their mercy then the arrows the arrows here is like a really important thing and i and i tried for a long time to like display this graphically um essentially if you're playing it safe and you're jockeying back and forth with your opponent you're going to follow the gray arrows where you might yeah. gain you might gain or lose one of one box i might gain the upper hand when we're equal or i might drop down to being weak because we're like not committing too hard or i can be really bold and I can go from equal to dominant, or if I lose, or, I drop all the way down to vulnerable. Yeah. Um, so it was this way of saying like I'm taking more. I I'm lowering my position for greater effect. No, yeah, um, that's like exactly where my mind went. And throughout all of this, it is the feeling I have when I'm like looking at someone trying to solve a puzzle, and I know the answer to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like reading this, I'm just like, oh, but you just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that. There's that urge to be like, no, you just do this thing because it, it has been solved now. But, it's an incredibly frustrating feeling. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting to look at this and be like, oh yeah, okay, this is doing a lot of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can see how it's a lot more. Uh, it's a lot less clear. It's more. It's really fiddly. fiddly. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, one thing I like, I don't, I don't know if it, oh yeah, it is here. I, I'm going to put this in a game because I, I, I've always liked it. I have it in a few drafts of various things. Um, you make three rolls to resolve the contest, your opening move, the follow through and the final move. Hmm. I really like that. It, I think, I think that fits a game somewhere um, to just break everything down to this three phases, like beginning, middle, end, and it's over. Yeah. Um, like it's, it feels kind of like battles in apocalypse world or mm -hmm. burning wheel volleys mm -hmm. this idea of having these like little narratives that you can spin um yeah, yeah and it, and that was all to like drive that fictional output so you knew how to do with deal with the ladder next like mm -hmm. things went badly in your opening move that's different from saying things went badly at the final moment right yeah. like it positions yeah, like us in this different brain. space the whole thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I can. I mean, this is this isn't 
like totally wrong or anything right this is just a, to a very different way to envision everything it's a weird it's a weird thing then <laughs> on a tie requires like this crazy insane tie breaking bullshit um <laughs> there's harm there's you can spend so, points to adjust your role and blah 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 and yeah moving away from a situation where two people are rolling against each other to now in the final cut of blades where you just never do that mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no time when anyone is rolling a die against someone else and trying to marry that type of thing to the mechanics and blades is very very difficult i tried to do it for for one of my downtime actions in my game there needed to be a thing where two characters argue mm. and able to determine who wins the argument and figuring out a way to do that was ties were where 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 it got weird um, but luckily, in my case, I could just be like, on a tie, it's just bad for both of you. You're fucked. Sorry. <laughs> Which is appropriate. Uh, you know, and then we move on. But yeah, yeah, there's like this this question of like ties because there's no way of of cleanly ensuring that you don't get one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this was a dead end, but it definitely, particularly the arrow thing, like I, I, ha I still have these notebooks. Uh, I have a bunch <laughs> of drawings of like, basically risk versus reward um lower position yeah. for greater effect in all these different graphical formats to try to like convey it as a picture um mm -hmm. yeah all these different visuals for that yeah principle, which i'm sure will come up later because it's a very fundamental notion it yeah, is like reward so a lot of things get framed characters well, cool. have gotten a little simpler um there's four sort of categories now instead of a bunch yeah we have witch scoundrel burglar and cutthroat which still takes six xp to advance because it's better than the other ones um and this was this is basically half yeah in the previous version yep pretty much half homeland has come into it which is a another like thing this is horrible uh everyone from one island has it's, it's one of these way. three qualities yep because that um, makes sense. That's not awful. The word awful. Akros was there in the previous version we were looking at as well, but it wasn't framed in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this well, is the worst. Active Eruvians, John. I know. You know how they are. Ugh. Ugh. It's awful. But again, it was aesthetic concerns, right? Like, mm -hmm. I I know I want these, like, the certain feeling, and I'm trying to convey it in the totally wrong way like ultra racist way yeah, uh, yeah very, very problematic yeah for, yeah but you know tried and true for role-playing games pretty standard for role-playing <laughs> games yeah um there was a version later on where i forget where this came up but there was a version where it was um i kind of cued into why this was so awful uh I, if i had to guess avery probably told me um <laughs> and these these became like um cultural cliches and stereotypes and, mm -hmm. and you got instead of getting a bonus because you were cunning you could use someone's expectations of you against them yeah um like oh they think i'm this way because i'm from acro so i can like turn that turn the tables on them and th yeah, they, they survived they, briefly I, because I, of that dumb or like a wild dagger islander and then i am mm -hmm. calm and polite and it throws them off yeah yeah because yeah, i i always wanted race or like homeland and heritage um to really matter in the game especially like issues of of racism and classism and stuff to be yeah, exactly. to be in the setting have that at play in your world so that it is a it is authentic to our current world in a place right sport. we're not pretending that it's oh it's all over whatever it's just fine no one thinks about that <laughs> Which, I mean, sure that's one way to do it but yeah i appreciate your desire to yeah have there are some settings play. where that would make sense but uh this isn't one of them well, yeah, because there's this like shitty, oppressive colonialist yeah. empire, and to not have, anyways, yeah, it has right. to it has to be shitty, or what what message does that send? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, characters are simpler. There's still this like kind of like circle your your talent thing um, for various things. There's a million of them, which is like a bad idea. Turns out, yeah, there are a lot of tags now. Yeah, too many. Including triple X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. You're yeah. Vin Diesel. You can paraglide on a snowboard through you have a sick tattoo of three x's on your back <laughs> that's it that's all it does <laughs> you just look you look real hard yep homeland diesel 
Well, I think we've said everything that needs to be said. Yeah. Uh, Blades in the Dark, it's a pitch, pitch black <laughs> RPG. Uh, you, <laughs> the whole table plays as Vin Diesel. Uh, pitch in the black. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna make that Blades in the Dark hack. I play that sci-fi, a grim sci-fi uh, power fantasy for Vin Diesel. I ran uh, X Crawl, uh, using Savage Worlds, but the X Crawl setting where it's like uh, reality TV, Running Man, Dungeon Crawl um, mm. on, for, on TV, and you had sponsors like I I, I got the new like uh, Pepsi, you know, boots or whatever, and that those those, yeah. those are your magic items. Um, but to we're, when I was first pitching the game, I was getting at it from the running man angle and stuff. And I was playing with John Agard and he's an amazing gamer. And he, 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 he didn't even get the whole sentence out. He was going to say something to help like orient us into the right setting, but all he only said two words of his sentence and they were president diesel. And everyone was just like, okay, yeah, no, no, we got it. Yeah, we got, I understand the whole setting now. It's fine. Yeah, yeah we're good by royal decree <laughs> there will be a dungeon battle so uh, we still have guild actions guild actions are still here guild sheet hasn't really changed um why did i include this one there was something about it that i wanted to point out maybe i already did yeah this was this was it's, the main thing it's this probably one. this the dominance ladder yeah this whole thing yeah uh moving on to version three that was version two here's mm-hmm. here's version three with all of its talents Ooh, look at all those this is a whole thing. uh here's here's the character sheet this may start to look familiar this is we're getting there um, the names at least yep finally the leech and whisper get a fair shake they're not being discriminated against by your horrible <laughs> hatred of mages yeah uh here are the eight gather information abilities because that's a thing the game needs eight different ways to gather information that didn't slow the game down at all that was it was awesome So when you gathered info you had to pick one and then you could ask questions from it each one had its own question list yes and this was born of john harper's stubborn desire to have all the characters be the same character type yes everyone was a scoundrel <laughs> <laughs> you're all just you're just scoundrels okay you're all the same and it's still true today in the game it's just hidden <laughs> yeah because <just, laughs> i never gave it up yeah um it, it, you know it's i say that not to not just to make fun of you <laughs> um, but also to show that like sometimes we get hung up on on a certain framing and it can lead to non-optimal decisions yeah yeah in defense can... of this thing that you're really attached to it can make you like not open to alternatives, right? Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. You, you, you care about this something too much, or, um, and it, and this is a drum that I've beaten. Agon is like this. Everyone is a hero. You have the same character sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted that in gaming. I, I like, I like when the PCs are like the same type. Yeah. Um, Three sixteen was like that. Um, and a lot of gamers really don't really a lot of gamers are like no i'm the whatever and they really need their niche and i have this like perverse desire to to like kick that over and be like no yeah. uh so yeah it it got in the way a bit <laughs> stress has appeared um, yeah, yeah i noticed that also at the bottom you may notice there are three three roles a desperate gamble a risky move and a controlled maneuver okay yeah so we're starting to get there we're here you uh, you do it on a six um, the, it's starting to, starting to arrive. I think I've skipped over a few, a few versions. This may reappear in the next one for a long time when you did a desperate move and not on this sheet, but in general on a six, only one thing went wrong. Right. It was, um, it was way more gnarly. Once, it. once you knew you were in a desperate position, you knew there was kind of no way clean out of it. Yeah. Which suited uh-huh. the game, um, but after a long playtesting in that mode, we realized, no, you need that, like, I, oh, I got, I did it, I got out. Yeah, the, I, the slim odds of the really good outcome. Mm-hmm. It was, it was. Um, really- and in this framing, this is, because this is basically, we have position now. Do we have effect as a kind of, it's, 
effect exists but hasn't been formalized is my under, is my read of this let's I, yeah we'll look at the next sheet i don't know where this is here i know that to determine position you use these factors talent prep experience commitment deployment and assets cool I, I see logic in that because mm -hmm. we need context to inform these decisions. Yep. In practice, like interrogating these it six things book. every time you make a roll. Yeah. Not good. Just people arguing over whether or not this is brawling. Like it just totally relates to my brawling expertise as a cutter. Yep. Yep. And, and so I tried to patch it, right? Instead of like making a better system, I wrote all this text around like, okay, GM, like pick the one of these that your gut tells you is the most important one. Yeah. <laughs> Does someone have a big advantage there? Okay. Go with that. Like, okay, that that's a way to get around all of that. Like laborious yeah, like business. The, the important factor here is blah. And you like announce it. Yeah. And which the or, rules for effect still kind of sort of work that way, you know, where you go, well, what, what really matters here? Is it tier? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. like, man, okay, I'll just go with that. Um, but this just needed to be taken out. And instead I was like, let's, let's write a bunch of text to make this still work. So yeah. Those factors need to happen, uh, inside the black box, not, yeah. not be exposed on the surface. Yep. Uh, yeah. So here's rolling the dice, the positions, um, what the actions like cutter is violence, lurk is sneaking. It's obvious yep. stuff. Harm and stress. Um, Again, there's no resistance roll, and you can't spend stress for anything. This is just yeah. this is just another form of harm, basically. Um, teamwork has arrived. Uh, providing backup and helping someone. Um, teamwork was not really mecha mechanized in the game for like a long time, which is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's like a big blind spot now to be like, oh yeah, teamwork. It, and your team <laughs> we like we as players knew this was super important and we constantly used teamwork in when we were playing yeah like it was an important staple in the fiction mm -hmm. but, but there was just no backing it, up. it was all kludgy in the moment stuff and like like oh i guess that means blah yep yeah and this this did survive basically one of the teamwork actions still is you can improve their position or increase their effect of their action uh yep. that's that's still there um oh yeah this is this is again like the horrible lifestyle thing where you're like i murdered a thousand people and now instead of meals of sausage beer in a private room i have meals of roast chicken <laughs> yay what if i like sausage john do i have to eat it's gone chicken? forever is it really uh, I, I don't know. yeah um vice uh so th this is a phase oh god let's skip that for now um <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Can't even look at it. This is a phase where um, vice and guild stuff were all around upkeep. Yeah. So it was constantly going to fall down this ladder of making things worse for you. And you had to like pay into it to stay at zero. You're in debt. Yeah. It's like a zero sum thing where you have to make enough money to stay afloat. Yeah. Um, this isn't quite that version i think this is slightly further on but for a long time that's how it was you had to pay up keep to keep your guild intact you had to pay up keep so you didn't drop tier and yeah so your gang didn't leave you and it was just it was thematically appropriate like oh we're scrambling to like keep what we've got and it's really hard but you know it but, put, put the wrong focus on yeah and we can see how at the end of the day with the final cut again um we achieve the you achieve the feeling of that without needing to have all that all those moving parts yeah a lot of bookkeeping and yeah that kind of thing the guild still does have actions now they're now they're these like again it's made to me even more like the pcs they've got four things the pcs have four things yeah um so much like them that you might even say john that the pc should just do it yeah what a, what a concept <laughs> Um, there's heat now you used to have like cover as a thing where your, your, your cover was being a cult or whatever. And your cult, your cover could be like degraded. Um, that was a thing. Yeah. And like all of these are interesting ideas, but it's mm -hmm. just a matter of like, what, what do you want to emphasize and what gets cut? Yeah. It was, it was giving 
giving this faceless entity things to do as opposed to like a common shared resource. Um, yeah. that was the dead end. Uh, I thought the guild should have this like agents again. It's like stars without number factions. Um, once it got flipped back to, this is just the sheet you all share and you can pull off of this for your characters yeah, to do cool stuff. Stuff. Yeah. And it has yeah. like equipment. It has, uh, cohorts, right. Which do some of this stuff, right. It has yep. lived on cohort. and the guild special abilities are for the PCs. They, they, yeah. they, they give the PCs things instead of giving the guild things or the crew things. Um, so yeah, that took, that took a lot of that. that and that change came in pretty late actually. Um, mm. There was a long that, That's period. interesting here because it seems so fundamental now mm -hmm. that the game is just like very cleanly pared down to being like everything in service of the characters. Yeah. No, the, the crew sheet having its own actions survive for quite a while. Because um, now we're at version... That was 3, and now we're... 3.2 or something? 3.2. This is the... Yeah, now the numbering gets weird because this is this is like the actual, for real, playtest alpha. Yeah, um, June 6, 2014. So six months, more, a little more before the Kickstarter. More, Yeah, more than that, but... Um, yeah, like late that year is when the Kickstarter would have or the round new year. Yeah, um, a little a little later, but this this is what started to circulate. Um, so we're getting into trying to like sell this these these six things: cutter slide, whisper, etc. As like the branding of the thing, which was extremely powerful. Like these word these six words like really sold the game real well. Um, yeah, like it's for it's forming an identity. Yeah, yeah. The three the three roles have kind of solved the whole horrible ladder ladder business. Yep. Um, You're distilling that down to a cleaner and cleaner mm -hmm. setup. Yeah. But what's but what's inside here is still not right. Like the the details of what these moves do are still off. Mm -hmm. The details of how vice works is off. The details of harm are off. So notably here, we're at the six is a clean success, four to five is partial, one to three is a fail. Mm -hmm. um, how are our dice working at this stage of the game? Uh, that's a good question. Let's go to the, here we go. Because I think the transition from you roll one mm -hmm. happened somewhere in the last like couple of sheets. Yep. But it happened kind of in the night. We didn't see that transition. Yeah, you're, you're rolling pools of d6s now and they are based on like we say oh you're doing you're doing violence okay you're going to use cutter and you have this many tags and you circled, have this many so that's your rating tags of, of dice yeah now the obvious problem with that when you're when you're using the fiction to finally parse your position and your effect and all this i how, think i'm already seeing it how yeah. do i apply these just universally like i'm not necessarily using blade work but apparently my blade work is helping me roll better. Or also I don't have blade work as one of my specialties. Blade work is what I'm doing, but I have every other specialty. So I still roll four dice, even though even then my though position will be worse or something. I don't have this. Yeah. Yeah. Like totally. Yeah. So it, it got into this weird place where, wait, we're supposed to care about the fiction and then we're not supposed to care about the fiction. Yeah. And then oh. it just kind of, we just like ignore it for a moment, hold our breath, roll the dice and like, then resume the fiction. Yeah. yeah. I, I have, if I have these, I just have cutter four. I don't, why do I have these words written down? What, yeah. What is that doing for me? Um, so there, again, I, there was a patch. I said, oh, well, oh wait, where is it? Um, you can see it at the top right corner of yeah. the sheet here. Um, your talent level is kind of your like effect level. So you can circle them more than once. I can have cipher one, cipher two or cipher three. And now I know when I do blade work, if I have blade work three, like, I, I'm more effective. Yeah. At you're that. A, a master of that. You're focused. And yeah. But again, it's just a patch. I, these, these, it doesn't solve the fundamental I, problem. I shouldn't have these here. Yeah. <laughs> um, these, but these, again, just like the names of the categories, these words are carrying a lot of aesthetic weight. Yes. Um, because they're helping to define what the fuck cutter means. Exactly. So I don't want to jettison them. At this point, I, I just want to patch them because um, yeah. I feel like, oh, man, without these words, like we're we're lost. 
uh, which isn't true because you could say any of these words to someone and they will know what all of these sub things are. They'll it, generally, yeah, they'll, they'll hit the mark pretty closely. Yeah. Um, and these are essentially have been carried forward from the very, very beginning mm-hmm. as well too. So these are at this point have a bit of a rut in the design. Yep. It could be fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is working really well where you like fill up your XP thing and you get, you get a new like bit of, of that, whatever that sub category mm-hmm. is. And these are, and it's compelling to, to think of it this way of like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm like good at this new thing that is cool. Yeah. And because we're all one playbook, it, it distinguishes me from you. Like I have yeah. cutter blade work and reflexes and you have cutter brawling and presence. Like that's different conceptually. We're different people. And, and this also speaks to the granularity of these sheets being less than the final cut mm-hmm. where we go into cutter and cutter is its whole own thing yep cool uh so we've got our moves we've got still like the nascent teamwork um stress uh oh the, here here yeah this has happened now you can choose to suffer stress to get plus one d on a roll so that right. that, so that idea has come in yeah um Lifestyles are still dumb. Ooh, finally, I get a meal of mutton and exotic spices. Uh, <laughs> Gotta get that rare game, John. <laughs> so dumb. Um, we didn't talk about this in the other one. So for a while, I had this idea again, like that beginning, middle, end concept. There was this thought in here to resolve things with one roll or break them into like two steps to achieve that beginning and an end or do the whole thing beginning middle and end um and then like the fractal form where you have a beginning middle and end but you break the middle part into three bits yeah totally and it's like it's essentially pacing right like a a visual way to show pacing Mm -hmm. um and i think it's like conceptually an interesting idea but it never went anywhere in the game except here's a thing you can here's an idea this is another <laughs> one of john's essays it's just an essay yeah yeah and it it is totally interesting but yeah is this some is this a mechanic of your game it's kind of implied that it should be because it's in the rules but you're not even you're not saying that necessarily here yeah and this is something troll babe uh to name one it does have rules that do this and it actually like uses this mechanically in terms of like how many thing how many steps are required to do a something um Whereas now this is talked about in the book, but more as a like tool in the GM's kit if they want to. Mostly, to, mostly like, I see this as like scores and stuff. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the score angle, yeah, totally. From the player's facing side, these are like clocks, right? You go mm-hmm. like you roll to break in, or you go, oh, there's like a security clock, and you yeah, are, and you, you just know, need to like do actions that will tick that along, ticking it along. Yeah, totally. Um, Planning has come into it uh, as a as a thing you need to care about. Um, however, in this one, it it's still saying like, oh, you know, don't planning is boring. Yeah, don't um, do it. But instead, it says characters have a talent called strategy. So you, instead of doing your plan, you roll your strategy talent, and then mm-hmm. the outcome, the GM goes, oh, you have a good plan or a bad plan or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm so trying to skip over planning here with this. This is the seed of engagement rolls. Yeah. And this was a dead end because substituting planning f- with a skill role that doesn't have any fictional question, like the engagement role now skips over a lot of that kind of stuff, but you have to look at all these fictional details and go what, mm-hmm. like, what about this? What about that? Yeah. It's um, still grounded. If you're just like roll strategy, you got a three. Okay. You have a bad plan. Like that sucks. <laughs> there's, there's nothing fun about that. And this could happen like, in the middle of a score you're doing the thing and we're like oh we would have planned for this and then you roll strategy and it's like oh yeah you have a shitty plan based on bad information or whatever yeah i mean it's even more wishy-washy than that actually yeah. but yeah okay um okay sorry to poke it, holes in the design that you dropped oh, we'll it's just... it's a it's a mess it's it but <laughs> but it's it's worth pointing out because it was again like this this post in the ground like oh okay wait We've been successfully avoiding planning ruts in our mostly in our mm-hmm. play tests because we just have gotten better at that. And you've all decided to value that as a play group. Yeah. 
this needs to be elevated to to a thing to say in the game like yeah this needs to be fixed you need to care about it um and it's funny now because this this is one of the things if you talk if someone is excited about blades in the dark this is often the very first thing they will say about the game like yeah, as, as, a, as a defining like feature nonsense yeah um and something i will point out here is that this is an example of you uh making a statement as a creative about how people should play your game mm. you're not being a passive it's not a passive offering mm -hmm. of like yeah do whatever you want with this game if you want to plan things great no you're like no fuck no you're not planning anything it's not allowed <laughs> it's against the rules uh, which is a really really powerful thing to do um and like saying no to your players or denying them stuff can be a really important way to focus play on the stuff that matters yeah it's again uh pretty sure i i heard vincent say this at one point but um the, the idea of a lot of game designs is is um placing roadblocks in front of the players right you you don't make a mario level that's just a flat ground that goes all the way to the flag mm -hmm. like you put holes in and you put monsters in like it makes it harder to get there uh I mean, there's there's like no you can't just run to the end because the uh, problems are the game yeah like, yeah so it denying people certain things and being like no you just you don't do that in this game um that's a that's a good first thought uh, often in, in how to approach something is to take something away instead of adding something because mm -hmm. um, it's 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 easier to some degree and more like satisfying to add often cutting yeah, the, cutting is painful the inclination to solve things is generally by yeah generating some new widget mm -hmm. really just sharing stuff away which is totally fine them. like i always we use, always would talk about this and when i did agency work like often the process is this process of creation and like things expanding past the scope and like exploration blue sky uh, yeah thinking and then you get into the editorial phase where you trim trim back um, down so yeah totally yeah, nor the, totally normal that um, tension i think is really productive yeah but it does hurt you're absolutely right <laughs> yeah cutting can be can be painful um guild actions are still here they they will not they will not go away <laughs> turf war and claims have arrived uh oh. the idea of claims um again like we were doing this in the game and we need yeah. like how do you track it what do you get for a claim you get how income you this within your rules mm -hmm. yeah yeah that that started to come into it the real the dead end here was just that they didn't uh they they added to the bookkeeping of the game i see um, 0.5 coin <laughs> and i want to scream <laughs> earn 1.5 coin round down for each claim yeah so this was a thing in the game for a long time i actually might get to this i'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that there there, there were th <laughs> there were things you rolled for that you should not roll for so i'll, I'll talk yeah. about that uh here's... yo I've hit, I've hit some of those in my game too mm -hmm. recently and made those repairs and it feels so much better so much better just like uh, roll for way less things and have the have the dice rolling feel very important and focused and yeah yeah it's so so important because it just buries a game and a bunch of math and staring at numbers or referencing rule books and yeah yeah, yeah. it's and it makes sense right you're you're especially when you're in a mode where you're making sort of the core systems and you're finding these nice oh yeah this is a good way to to address a to answer a question you know like mm -hmm. i can i can fall back on my action role or i can fall back on my whatever cause that that feels good so then you hit another part of your game that's like here's a question and you go oh i know how to answer questions i use yeah, that rolling i roll that thing yeah. um and you you end up in these these weird spaces which yeah we're definitely going to get to that here in a minute but uh version 4.5 we now have effect and effect levels as a like a stated thing in the game mm -hmm. um both for the players characters and for the right like we're seeing here as a as in the fiction right like people with good effects are masters or they're a large team or, yep yep yeah. yep it's all all there uh this this basically like staked out the space it, 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 the mental space that it needed that and then we could start grinding on what was inside here 
um, but like idea. breaking yeah. effect out like okay that's a, all right we need that uh -huh. um here's a question i haven't asked yet at any point because it's so fundamental in my mind but like at any point was the gm rolling dice mm -mm. so the the framing has been there the whole time of like the scoundrels roll yeah there there was that's like it. a die of fate yeah, yeah, which there still kind of is with, uh, yeah, fate rolls. What fortune, are they fortune, fortune rolls. rolls. Yep. There we go. Um, so yeah, so like you're never rolling, which is cool. Yeah, and it's very. I mean, that's just that's apocalypse world carried forward. Just but. yeah, apocalypse world. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, and and troll babes so, too. Yeah. Uh, well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Troll babe is not what I'm thinking of. Uh, what am I thinking of? Another Ron game. Um. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the, the, I don't think the GM ever really rolled in this game. Um, this 4.5 is now where we've arrived at the at playbooks. Yeah, we have the attuned. Yeah, and you still have like cutter, lurk, slide, and whisper as yeah. the as the things. But attuned was like you know, you have a weird collection. You get special armor versus supernatural effects. You can generate or conduct electroplasmic energy. So it's um, essentially the whisper. Yep. One of the dead end things here is check out this crazy set of shit here. Um, we yes. have arms, contacts, lifestyle, and tools into all these categories. Each one can be rating one, two, or three. Yo, John, I love you, but you have made a World of Darkness game. What the hell is this? <laughs> right? Like, this is so reminiscent of those World of Darkness things where it's like, oh, yeah, I spent some of my contacts. I have this contact. That this is. is... I have three dots on them. They're very important. Yeah. And there. and the same thing here up here. Like, look, this is harm, basic harm, battered, noticed, Moderate. covered, shattered, hindered, Secret. uncertain, distressed, assessed, flanked, outpaced. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's you're doing all this extra work that, in the end, you were just like, I don't know, just make something up. Right. Because okay, put it in this box. It's fine. I'm trying to help you. I'm I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to give you all these cues. So when it's time for you to mark harm, I'm I've you provided. Just circle the thing. It's yeah. There. yeah. But now. It, it, I'm, I've paralyzed you. Like, oh, you need yeah. to mark harm. Have I been this, outmaneuvered or overtaken? Uh, he uh, just stabbed me with a knife. Am I <laughs> overtaken or outmaneuvered? Yeah. I must. I must have been. Um, uh, fuck. What? What word do I choose? It's, it's horrible. This is the overly personal trainer who's like, yeah, you want to swing the club this way, and they're like hugging you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the reason for all these things here was the the wealth system had been such a flat nothing. Mm -hmm. and so i'm like ooh, look now look it's at all the things you can get yeah. Yeah. yeah all absolutely. this work all this thievery is you're gonna have a, a road map of all these things you can upgrade and buy and have mm -hmm. so very cool i mean and again i can see like it, these all all these decisions make sense in their context yeah uh it it it, it all made sense but it was it was wrong Talk to me about these failed rolls under Whisper. This clock for failed rolls. Oh, yes. So this was, uh, so I I came up with um, XP on a miss uh, for the regiment. And yep. um, everybody used it in their games because it's great. Uh, and it's just stolen from Mouse Guard. So I didn't I didn't really come up with it. But I, yep. I put it into the Apocalypse World framework and um, Dungeon World made it famous. Um, and then later, like Avery put it in Monster Arts 2, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's it. I mean, I'm I'm proud of that contribution, even though I essentially just got it from Mouse Guard. But I, I still I still think it's a nice way to do experience in the Apocalypse World framework. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh well, obviously, like that's a good way to do XP, so it should be in this game. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until much much later uh, when that got dropped and, re and replaced with Desperate Rolls as a. Yeah, which was a nice, si very similar mm -hmm. notion, but a good refining of to suit this purpose. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's like missing the obvious thing, right? It's sitting on top of desperate rolls, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like I can totally. It's right there. Upon seeing that, I was like, um, "Yeah, this is the thing that turned into that." It was it was very clear just looking at it. Yeah, so. and when you're when you're creating these nice buckets, and you're making desperate attractive again, like on a on a six. Um, oh, not right. Yeah. At this point, this still on a six, you do it, but suffer harm. Yeah, it's still bad. Um, but the game wants you to be in the desperate position. But you clearly think it's cool. 
I, I like very much designer think this is cool. Oh yeah. This is, this is obviously my favorite thing. Yeah. Um, the easy solution of give people XP for this took, took a while to click. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't want to be too quick to just be like, Oh, I'll just give them XP for doing this thing. And right. you don't want to solve every problem with that tool. That is often a bad way to go. Uh, yeah. So there's the attune, there's the Viper. <laughs> oh, these are, they're so edgy. Yeah. Very all edgy. these guys are in the eels. They all have those <laughs> body suits. <laughs> That's right. Uh, essentially what turned into the slide, but I mean, we have the slide over here, but this is like the, yeah. Um, the stalker. Ooh. Yeah. The scoundrel. Uh, so yeah, but once, once playbooks got into it and, and they were very lightweight, right? Like it's just like a few special abilities. Um, yeah. Like compared to the, the final cut, these are very pretty short lists. Yeah. And the abilities work very differently. It feels like they're, yeah, some of them are, are pretty different. Um, some of them are kind of the same, but, um, special or, armor or like supplemented so. by crew abilities, right? Like there's stuff like, yeah. Or the way gear works now. Like, yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing how like a lot of the same stuff exists, but the way that it is classified is different, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, here, here's a, here's a thing that has survived through all these versions, but now it's like a little more obvious in this format that there are 16, um, actions or yeah. s skills at this point, uh, which is too murder. many, um, yeah. murder. murder and mayhem, everyone's yep. favorites. Uh, but it's interesting. Like leech is in cutter. Mm -hmm. There's like some mm -hmm. classification stuff. That's fun to see how these things moved around. This stuff moved around a lot. And, um, it was it was the continual continual problem that kept getting patched, which was like how how can these things be distinguished in a way that isn't tedious? You know, you wanna mm -hmm. you want them to have strong points of view, and this set pretty much does. It took a while to get here, uh, but having sixteen is kind of crazy. That's uh, a lot. Twelve is still a lot. In the current. Yeah, like I, I cut down to nine for my yeah. game. It still feels totally fine. I think nine is fine. Um, yeah. If if I could have cut down to nine or or whatever in normal blades, I probably would have because I think going that direction is strong. Um, but and there's still places to cut. Like there's still people who who really like waffle around on command consort and sway and are like, do we really need three of these? You know, that's as a lot of yeah. a lot of ways to manipulate people um i again like from an aesthetic load point of view i like those three things um from a strict game design point of view you could probably collapse those into manipulate or whatever and just like color up how you're manipulating somebody yeah um that would be fine uh, but, but then also you were trapped by your design of having the three attributes so any your number needed to be div divisible by three you couldn't just cut one or two Right. And be lopsided. Yeah. Your, your framework required even distribution of all these things. And mathematically, and you changed this in Girl by Moonlight, mathematically yeah. in my version, I need a possibility of four resistance dots. Uh, yes. Because my characters are super resisty and your characters are not super resisty. Uh, so you want to you want to cut them down to only having three there because it's thematic. Because of how stress works in my game, which is very different where you have like, you kind of have 18 boxes of mm -hmm. stress kind of sort like, of and you want to push people to the limit quickly and then yeah there's like a whole different way that i've tried to tune that and yeah that that's part of how you can adjust those numerical things just by axing a bunch of like uh actions essentially yeah it, it dramatically changes the game yeah like it's a like, strength because it's everything is tightly integrated but it's mm -hmm. a weakness because it's brittle right if you yeah, change is really impact like does a changes a lot when you make yeah. a, a small. You can't just be like, eh, we'll have one one less thing. Like, psh, no, it falls yeah. apart. Uh, yeah, okay, playbooks version four. We're jumping up to version six. Okay, actually, I got to ask one last question. Yeah, how much how much did it like physically pain you to to make that change? Which to, to go from one playbook for all character characters to the segmented character playbooks um 
it was a gradual process uh like that that version still everybody was cutter slide whisper mm-hmm. down the side and it was just like kind of your specialty that was the playbook thing and so it was like a soft yeah because there were no like guaranteed action dots yet or no yeah that really cemented people into roles uh-huh so that that like got me a little closer without it being too painful yeah um you eased into the water yeah as it were yeah okay and then what what's missing from this progression is i i ran razors the like near future south china sea mercenaries version of this Mm. um for a long time uh, and then went back to core blades after like developing a lot of stuff in razors and having to do a modern day kind of mercs thing like there it was it was easy to like get rid of the idea of playbooks because there's less like iconic you know there's no wizards and fighters and stuff like that you're just all Um, murder robots right (laughs) which i didn't really want exactly um and so i started to come at it from this other angle where they i I wasn't fighting against the D &D classes as much as i was with blades because that Mm -hmm. that, uh, the whole context had shifted so i came up with things that started to look like playbooks and razors and i was like oh well this yeah this makes sense um as a way to like create characters more quickly and uh, to create neat uh, uh, not a niche protection thing but like to create a um a touchstone for your razors character because we don't have fighter wizard ranger yeah you know. there's a less established sense of tropes you can be like oh i'm i'm this it's a and it's an easy way to like grab a character um and once that was working strongly in razors i was like well that's a good thing it's it's we good to have pull that. that pull that tech and plop it into blades it, we should probably have it parallel space back yeah. here yeah yeah totally. so it, it it i had to go on a really long walk to <laughs> to, to get there well and it's like the thing when people are working on like a painting or whatever and digitally where they can just like flip the canvas oh yeah and then suddenly you see all this stuff that you were you're just used to looking at it the one way and you miss all these details especially like, faces you get like yeah, like this leg is too long or the other this is weird yeah um, and so similarly you go and work on another game and you get this whole different context for all the stuff and then be like oh no this is this is broken or this is bad or whatever yeah so, yeah it that that helped a lot i'm i'm i almost included that here but there's a lot of stuff there to slow this down yeah that's a lot lot. um from my own experience having the different modules for my game kind of acted in that similar way oh sure i mean that switched i would be like oh does this work in this thing do i need to like fudge this a bit to make it fit more generically is there some weird assumption i have made in this other thing so i mean you've definitely you've got a bit of a high wire act that you've set yourself there and it's turned out really well. Uh, but you have like all the, the playbooks are at this level and then you have all the different playset. uh, t- what do you call them now? Playsets. Now. Playsets. Yeah. Um, thanks like, Sean. To- oh. <laughs> totally different TV series that are very different from each other. And then the, this, this playbook layer has to neatly fit into each one, which is yeah, everything has to be modular. That's really um, challenging. And yeah, it's been a really interesting constraint to function under. And I think really fruitful because it just pushed me to like try, try really hard and examine my decisions over and over and over again with all these different contexts. Yeah. Um, well, for me as a player, weakness. Um, it strikes me, it, it, it like it hits me as a hook the way that the classic like, um, elf fighter dwarf barbarian thing does where if i'm like the 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 what are they called now the mysterious the masked um the uh, out the not the outsider the enigma, the enigma thank you i always want to say outsider um <laughs> like i can go like enigma plus oh it's not it's not called that anymore is it starlet kingdom uh <laughs> no uh, it's called in the kingdom of dawn now but in yeah the, in the kingdom of dawn they fit into each playset is very different but like from a player's point of view that informs my character like the those two things added together i have to reinterpret the setting given my 
playbook choice. I have to reinterpret my playbook choice given the setting, and it, it's this fruitful like mixture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I find if people have two two things to knock together, um, it tends to help everything else make a lot of sense and to give them something to to get them rolling. Right, like you've made not just one decision in a vacuum, but two decisions, and those have a connection, yep. and then other things can spool up from that. Yeah, and that that combination is going to be your own. You're, it's like it's like drawing two tarot cards. Like you're going to interpret yeah. them yeah, exactly to you know together in a powerful way. That's really cool. And so for you, you have this like big body of established fiction in Blades that people then get to connect into and place themselves within. Yeah. Which, in my experience of playing the game, really helps me get rolling right away because I can just be like, oh yeah, I'm like connected to these people or this institution or I backstabbed this uh, faction or whatever. Yeah, that and there was there was a lot of pushback, um, not a lot, but some pushback uh, during early designs to like not sort of canonize the to not have like a prescribed setting NPC lists, uh, at, like the named contacts and that kind of thing. Um, but at that point, I'd played a lot of Lady Blackbird and other stuff like and, and Apocalypse World. Uh, yeah, like Apocalypse like, World. Eh, this will it's fine. It's this isn't actually a problem. Oh. I think it's actually really fruitful because you have that whole shared space of like, oh, what was your Basho Baz like? Yeah. What was your needle or sitar or whatever? And people have uh, shared touchstones that they have that each remix. And yeah. That's with. And that's super awesome for the community to be able to talk about your game that way. Yeah. And it's like, how many times has the Royal Shakespeare Company put on Hamlet? Like, is, they're not like, <laughs> oh, another Hamlet. How boring. Like, you can infinitely reinterpret those things forever. Uh, yeah, and like you don't have to play in the same dusk wall twice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so for, version 4.5.1 to version 6. So now we're in beta. This is the beta. This is getting into the Kickstarter period. Um, We've got the new look. All the graphics have been redone. Uh, this, this change happened after Ryan had done the first cut of the Kickstarter video. So I, I asked him, he was very nice to me. I was like, can you redo all the graphics in the video to this now? <laughs> yeah, last minute branding update. Um, uh, yeah, he did it. He did it. Uh, the old one is still on YouTube though. I think you can find it, but that has the old, the old stuff. Yeah. It's like buried somewhere. Uh, so this is getting, this is familiar kind of what yeah, we saw before. Um, a lot of this is Greek uh, cause I yeah, was like, I know I need, I need text here. <laughs> yeah. um, There's the more egregious self insert. Yeah. <laughs> so, Oh, it's not on this one. I wanted to talk about this. Um, there were, there are two, two things that, that lasted for a while and had to be cut or three things really the teamwork role and the heat and develop or the development role in particular, which you can't see here and a heat roll uh and the development role which is so for teamwork and for these two oh, yeah, things there was teamwork role as well you're 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 rolling to generate a oh, resource okay. yeah okay because we roll one die for each tactics skill dot yeah and then you get this teamwork pool uh which you can spend out of you know to, for bonus dice basically yeah so they're yeah more this almost starts to feel like gambits. It, yes, a lot like gambits in a scum yeah. of villainy. Uh, and then for heat and development, you rolled one die for smooth and quiet, two die for under control, and then you generated heat from your roll and then development. Right, like rolled on a table, yeah, okay. Development's missing, but it's the same thing. You, and you would generate how much coin you earned, basically. And this is where we start talking about like cutting out places where you rolled and having less of them. Yeah, because like we have a decent, the dice system feels good. Everybody likes it. Um, and it's, it's connected to the fiction, like our mm -hmm. dice, we build our dice pool based on the fiction. That's good. Um, and then we build our payment from the fictional cues and we get paid certain, like it's, it's variable. We never really know what we're, how much we're going to get. And da, da, da. it's all, it all sounds good until you start doing it. Uh, yeah, and it just all, adds yeah. all this business to play on, on yeah. it, it for teamwork, especially it adds this like layer that you really don't need. And then Whereas, for the payoff and heat, like okay we got three instead of four we just went through all this bit stuff and a roll and are we getting bonus dice or penalty dice or and like what is the delta and 
like who cares just how much is that worth yeah worrying about just set it to these fixed amounts same thing with payment just and like we could be at wild devastating exposure and still get less heat than <laughs> if we do a quiet job and just roll high and what does that even mean why and like, yeah like we have to, the and again we're getting to that issue of the mechanics are driving the fiction not the other way around exactly once we get into those positions where we're making those rolls yeah yeah and there are cases where you want the mechanics to drive the fiction certainly like acquiring acquiring an asset um like your vice role or your recovery whatever but these are not places where you want that you want you want something simplified and straightforward um, yeah these ones these feel like you're getting robbed yeah and ways. on the same vein the effect role which lasted for a very long time through, oh, all dear. through post kickstarter development oh dear um, i forgot about this the the thing that if you had talked to me a year before this about rolling to hit and rolling for damage in D&D, I would have ranted at you for an hour about how that's yeah, dumb. About how you don't like it, but then here you are repeating it. And I'm repeating it right here through a, through a thousand tiny cuts. Like to, all these yeah. all these sensible decisions led me here to a Try thing to that I this. already knew was a bad idea. Um, and I'll say briefly, if you haven't heard my rant, um, basically, you know, you don't want something in a game where you, you don't want a mechanic that invalidates a step with with nothing in between yeah like you hit you get a great hit and then you do no damage yeah and you're like cool so what was so great about my hit? or i do all this setup so my damage is maximized and i miss yeah it basically i only get the thing when both of these happen just right uh and well, nothing yeah, happens right. in between them that you, you right. engage one and you engage the other with no inputs yeah. Yeah, and Burning Wheel, you have stuff like Let It Ride for that same reason, so that the GM can't just nickel and dime you and rob you of your successes by chaining rolls together. Yeah. This is like the system inherently does that to you. Yeah. And it's yeah. functional in a tabletop battle game where with a very fast pace uh, where we're just ripping through actions real quick and it's fine. Or where that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Although there's still, some, there's still some problems there, but... Um, I got to this point because I was I was like, well, the I already talked about how I wanted the action role to be this this blanket thing where, that where we could interrogate the fiction and we could use this in any scenario because we're gonna bring in all of these factors, uh, and so using that same mentality when it comes to how effective something is, like and this and this came out of razors to some degree because in razors. You have scenarios that aren't very common in Blades where our little PT boat is being threatened by this Chinese frigate. <laughs> and like, how can we interact with them? Like what, how much are they blowing us up and how much are we denting their, their hull? And like, how do you, how do you determine those things in a satisfying way? And rolling dice for it felt fun because it was like yeah they didn't roll high enough to blow us up <laughs> awesome um so it 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 felt good there even though it was not the right solution it was working and so i brought it back when, when i did that shift back into working on core blades without really considering it too much yeah and we can see too that there's stuff of like there's a lot more complicated of a conversation around figuring out what your pool is because mm -hmm. we're, we're losing dice Mm -hmm. which is something that has been cut and then yeah yeah also buy if your background or heritage applies mm -hmm. which is an interesting way to make those matter yeah people were a little annoyed when this went away um the bonus die for background or heritage really they, taking their dice john they liked it a lot they were like oh yeah but i was a, i used to be a cop that that totally works so i was like well you're getting you're getting that bonus die from your background permanently forever because you put an action yeah, dot in it put an action dot. <laughs> so it's not so it's no longer contingent still. you just yeah. you just have it forever but it feel it just doesn't feel the same um like no but i want i want it to be a bonus it doesn't feel as <laughs> it's not in their face constantly yeah. They're not being asked yeah. about it continually yeah effect roll i mean we've gotten to the most egregious bad thing that was ever in blades probably is this stupid thing so yeah there it is, people. Soak it in. It sucks. John made an error. <laughs> Rubbing oh, his man. face. Don't let him forget it. Uh, here's what playbooks look like at this point. We have a whisper now. Yeah, we've got... Still have 16. Starting to kind of be a thing. Yep. 
advancements basically how it is now stress and trauma are in the, the pretty much everything's getting there trauma there's no trauma conditions at this point but laid book cloak mask mm, edgy just <laughs> it pains me to see these words on i know the page a little I know. bit it's just like the final cut is so much more elegant than this it's really funny and like you were saying uh when you have a structure set up that works like like oh yeah this is i need a master category where you get xp and it, yeah. it affects your resistance there's rare. no res- resistance yet but yeah like but i need i i love this the structure so i need to stick labels on the structure yeah you're a slave to it at you're, this point. yeah yeah uh yeah whisper slide lurk cutter spider it's the spider is funny because um i i cut it with some some like prejudice like the game game doesn't need a spider like i don't want i don't want a master of mind that's not what this game is mm-hmm. plan this game is against planning fuck spiders um and then during the or just before the kickstarter um right or right after it had started maybe strash was like i know how to make the spider work in blades it, you threw it away but i i can i can make it work and i was like all right let's see what you got um so strauss totally like rescued this concept because yeah. i i tossed it away well one thing i'm noticing just now is like where are flashbacks yeah no 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 mechanical flashbacks here um yeah. we, we we did them when we played but they hadn't been uh they're not like instantiated in that same way because that was a ne- that's mm-hmm. a necessary underpinning for the ultimate version of the spider yes and to really make planning work right yeah uh, totally and then we, resistance rolls we have stress that we can spend now, mm-hmm. um, but we still don't have resistance rolls. We still don't have flashbacks. We don't still have, we are, we have this budding stress economy that has not blossomed into its beautiful final form. It's so hard for me to think back. Cause I, I can remember so many amazing moments from the very first session and to through razors to everything. And mm-hmm. I, it's so hard for me to believe thinking back to some of those scenes that we didn't have resistance rolls. Like how were we, how were we playing this game? without resistance rolls because now those are like the cool thing about blades yeah it's it, it's definitive it some late yeah yeah that's like the big innovation i don't and it's like my memory has been has been occluded by that rule like i can't in my memory we did have them <laughs> yeah like it's just so fundamental <laughs> like, to the game now that yeah can't drop it i can't i can't think of how that scene happened where ryan got stabbed in the heart and survived like what did we do i remember when that happened but did he become a ghost yeah <laughs> he got put in a new body and like a bunch of that shit. was like that was the story of like the first session ever that was the yeah that was the very like, first he session. stabs you in the heart and you die the first the first thing that happened in the first session yeah <laughs> was him getting stabbed in the heart very good yeah that was a good one uh crew sheets there's like a downtime tick tracker here i don't know what that is uh i i is that to track your use of downtime actions maybe the crew had a limited set and you like and you didn't each get them yeah maybe i i don't remember how that worked you have units yeah you have books units of books units (laughs) of books uh yeah your units were your different like cohorts those were cohorts yeah totally um a lot of this stuff did survive uh yeah like it's all it's all coming together now yeah uh and then we're in the the final the final one we're gonna look at which is pretty much kickstarter era um a lot of this stuff is here the world spectrology the factions it's still 16 actions um effects are still still there yep oh boy well and it's it's interesting to see how much of the stuff that you view as being like utter crap is still in the game this late in it yeah and now you're just like oh that was just bad and that's gone completely the plan types are in flashbacks are in yep um and like the game could have released with those clunky bits yeah and i mean it it did on kickstarter okay yeah but there's just that extra bit of cleaning up that happened um this is maybe the last thing where 
I think we've gone over our like I think our second half might be longer than our first half. <laughs> but uh, as a dead end, I wanted to call attention to this because um, between like version four and now, there, I remember there were a bunch of different attempts at teamwork, and one of them that had a lot of traction and lasted for a long time was this role based teamwork where you yeah, had someone who was point. on point. Yeah. Well, yeah, you remember this, Andrew? You... I remember seeing it from the play test mm -hmm. and being kind of baffled by it. like it was too complicated for me to just like hear it and understand it mm -hmm. yeah so someone's on point someone's leading uh and then everyone else backs them up right so, so the idea was group actions sorry say again so it's basically group actions yes so or the beginning of that idea right the the like bad version of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it you had roles so there was someone on point and then everybody else yeah um and uh, when the team of PCs engages in an operation together, the GM asks the group who's on point. One of the players chooses to put their character in the point role. So when you're on point, you could lead a group action. You could try to overcome an obstacle on behalf of the team, or you could do a setup action for someone else. Mm -hmm. And generally there was a way when doing one of these actions where you would pass off the role of being on point to someone else. Yeah, which gets the very like Ocean's Eleven style, like exactly the plan coming together vibe. Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's an aesthetics layer to this that really works. Yeah, and it, and it was like a mechanical. This way also to... feels a lot like. Am I back? You're back. Okay. This also feels a lot like Mouse Guard to me. Yes, totally. Where influenced going by... through missions, it's like okay, now you're making the role, and other people are helping you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we had played a fair amount of mouse guard at this point yeah um, totally and it felt good like this this lasted for a while the kirk kickstarter early players really liked it everyone was very happy with this like oh we've mechanized like spotlight kind of you know where yeah yeah there's like a bunch of good things that come out of this yeah so why did you ultimately choose to cut it or change well, i mean yeah like rework this into being the new setup kind of the same reason that a lot of stuff got changed and it was that it was a mechanics driven notion and mm -hmm. in order to use the rest of the game system we needed to be very fiction forward yeah and so you got into these weird positions where mechanically we had chosen these roles and that limited our options in in strict rules based ways and then fictionally the situation didn't map well to that thing and so we're, structure. we're yeah. in this space of going, okay, wait, hang on. Given the on point and backup roles, you can't do that. But clearly you can do that because we... But, <laughs> yeah, like it would make sense for you to be doing it, but the rules say that you can't. Which yeah. You, which is the death of any, like, yeah. Yeah. That, that is where the Ludo narrative dissonance comes in and everything fucking goes haywire. And if you're playing it backwards, so we're playing like roll first system first you know roll the dice to determine the situation mm -hmm. and you know come at it this other way if this was a board game let's say yeah. um this would work and it would be a nice way of of handling that problem maybe but and then we come up with it like after the fact justification but because all of our yep all the stuff we care about is only because of it being consequential to the fiction yeah yeah uh, and then it got worse because like I put in these rules of like specifically how you're allowed to change roles and yeah, that was the one that stuck just, out to me. It was like, so yeah, so there's like a <laughs> passing of the baton mechanically and yeah, to pull that off that it also lines up with the fiction is yeah, quite the dance. Yep. It, it was a decent idea. Um, very inflexible. If someone ever makes their, uh, heist board game you can <laughs> you can use this yeah like this could this could be productive somewhere else it might it might work uh that might be the last the last little case study we have here because um, yeah this is looking perilously close to the actual game it still has effect roles thing. sadly <laughs> still has development roles to see how much you get paid and how oh and also how much hold you gain um mm. That, right, so that's how that yeah was resolved. Yeah, still sixteen actions. Characters are looking pretty much the way they do now, though. Um, oh, this effects chart. Oh, look at this! Look at this bullshit! Oh just, my god! 
I'm, I'm out. This is totally what the game needed. Six different types of effects rated one to four. Yeah. Rated one to four on top of 16 uh, skill <laughs> ratings. Yeah. Oh my God. What a nightmare. And it's fun to see how they've all moved around. Like Stitch, which was formerly Leech, I guess is still in Blade. Mm hmm. Yeah, like the. Yeah. The taxonomies, the classifying of the things in the system of 16 is very neat as a as an artifact and i think I've, I've said this a lot elsewhere but i'll say it here in case no one in case someone hasn't heard it uh, mayhem and murder in particular were were the main key to change to really change these because um their goals not actions and that 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 really cast a light on and uh, playing in that blood letters early blood letters series um <laughs> murdering someone is a goal how do you murder them there's a lot of ways to do it if you have one set of dots about murder then it's not it doesn't inform us about what your character's doing no. um and adam was using it as like you know shooting people with guns which is awesome uh but it quickly devolved into this weird other like all the rest of them had clear kind of actions that your character was taking and mm -hmm. murder did and not these were outcomes yeah yeah so that that finally clicked um, because because that aesthetic component was so strong. Having murder and mayhem on your character sheet was so good. Just felt really good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it 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 sort of hid that problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but we got there. Yeah, those, those ruts can be so hard to get out of. You gotta like shake your shake your thinking up yep. somehow. Uh, Cruz used to have named um, cohorts because I had room for names. So you would like <laughs> tick, tick them off. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, so this is all very familiar. Pretty much caught up to the modern day. Got rid of effect rolls. <laughs> yeah. What, a, what an exhausting journey through... <laughs> the refining and development of this thing yeah it was a long process thank you for hanging out with me and talking through everything and asking smart questions and everything that was really fun I tried not to bog it down too much there were all kinds of things that i wanted to just like dig all the way into but. i understand uh we we i think have an infinite scope available to us in all of our every conversation we have <laughs> The fact that we have to sleep and eat. Um, the gets, main limiting factor. Gets in the way. <laughs> uh, yes, but this was really good. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you have questions or comments or observations, leave them in the comments and I will probably read them. I, Andrew's not on the hook for that, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through and... I'm not signing up for that. <laughs> I'll go through and give some replies uh, or hit me up on Twitter or on Reddit, or on the G plus group, or whatever for Blades. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's been us in our Blades retrospective. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>